Hi, my name is John Gibbons, and I'm going to talk to you today about the brachial plexus, but mainly the branches that comes from C5 to T1. So these are the terminal branches here, and they are the muscular cutaneous, the auxiliary, the radial, the median, and the ulnar nerve. If you were to watch my first video on the brachial plexus, I explain the complexity of the picture here, so you might find that one easier to watch first before you watch the second one, but it's your choice. Let's just do a recap on the brachial plexus. The brachial plexus comes from the level of C5, C6, C7, C8, and T1. These are actually the nerve roots here rather than the level of the vertebra. And you can see on this skeleton that it comes between the anterior fibers of the scalene and then the mid fibers that comes off and it goes through a space called the interscalene triangle, goes over the first rib, under the clavicle, and underneath the pec minor, conjoins with the subclavian artery, yeah, and then naturally supplies, and then the end result will be the, the terminal branches here. Now, if we're looking at the roots, okay, we've got five nerve roots, so C5, C6. Now, these two nerve roots conjoin to form a trunk called the upper. The C7 forms the middle trunk, and then C8 and T1 conjoin to form the lower trunk. So five become three, and then it splits to six. We've got an anterior and posterior division of each. I've just swapped this one round here, just for a demonstration here. And then you can see in this case that, and I've done a different color, that the anterior division of the upper and the middle form a cord, which is called the lateral cord. And then that eventually becomes the nerve called the muscular cutaneous, which is the terminal branch. The posterior, you can see, is a continuation of three posterior divisions that forms a posterior cord, and then that becomes mainly the radial. There is a branch coming off, a smaller branch, like, like almost like the side light in the car. It's a smaller branch, and that's called the auxiliary. And in this case, we've got the median nerve, which is a split from the lateral cord, and also a split from the, the medial cord, and that forms the median nerve. So almost like two innovations coming in here. And then the ulnar nerve is a simple continuation of the medial cord, yeah, which comes from yeah, the anterior division and also from the, the lower trunk. Okay, but the discussion today is mainly going to be looking at the cutaneous supply, but mainly the motor supply of each of the, the branches that comes off. One way to remember this is we can call it MAMU. Okay, so M-A-R-M-U. So MAMU would be a way to remember. And if you want to rem remember a way for the brachial plexus, the way it splits, then you can say, remember to drink cold beer. And that might be one way of remembering it. So what we can do first of all is start, and I'm trying to do it in, in the color pen relating to the nerve. So we start with the muscular cutaneous supply. Now, I'll do the motor supply first. So the motor supply for this one, this supplies three main muscles. We have a small one from the coracoid process to the humerus, and that's called the coracobrachialis. And then we've got the main muscles we can see, which is the bicep brachii, and then the smaller one underneath, well, it depends, it can be smaller, um, is called the, the brachialis. So let's write those ones down. So I'll put the M, okay, as the motor supply. So we've got coracobrachialis, and then we've got biceps uh, brachii, okay, and then also we've got brachialis, okay, and then we, they have the three muscles that that nerve supplies, and then if I put S as the sensory, and then it supplies the lateral forearm, okay, along here, so that's the, the sensory supply for that. Just be careful because this innovation here could also be coming from C6 nerve root. So just bear in mind that if you have pain or tingling, you have to di differentiate between a muscular cutaneous nerve issue, sensory, yeah, or maybe coming from the actual C6 nerve root. But that will be in another talk. Now, the auxiliary nerve. So the auxiliary nerve motor, okay? So the motor supply will be to the, the deltoid, okay? The deltoid muscle. And also to a smaller muscle, which is at the back, and is called teres minor. So we have a small muscle, which is basically an external rotator. The deltoid 
The anterior fibers will flex, the mid fibers will abduct, the posterior fibers will extend and externally rotate. And the sensory component, I'll try to keep these simple. Um, it mainly supplies like this area where my badge would be. Like if you're in, in the military, they would call it the regimental badge area. So this area in here, I dislocated my shoulder many years ago. And I remember when it was relocated, the nurse had a neurological tip and she asked if I could feel that. And I said, no. And she said, more than likely you've damaged the auxiliary nerve because of a shoulder dislocation. So the sensory will be to mainly to the regimental badge area. Okay, and as I just explained. Now, the radial nerve. Now, this is a pretty, uh, well, a nerve that supplies many, many muscles. So let's start on the motor supply. I try to keep things simple if that's possible, even though anything to do with any form of plexus is, is quite difficult in itself. So the radial nerve, I, I say it's an extensor nerve. So what that means is it's an extensor of the elbow, Okay, and it's an extensor of the wrist, and also we can talk about the muscles of extension of the thumb. So if you think about the muscles that are responsible for that, so the muscles of extension of the elbow will be the triceps. Okay, we naturally got the, the long head, the short head, and the medial head, yeah, as a result of that. Um, and also we've got another small muscle, which is called anconius which is also an extensor of an elbow. There's a muscle here, and even though it's not true to say it's an extensor, right, it's an elbow flexor, but also it can assist in pronation and supination, and then that'll be the, the brachioradialis. Uh, let's do brachioradialis from there. And also we've got the supinator, that's also involved with the radial nerve innervation. Now, now the extensor muscles. So we've got muscles that extend the digits. So they will be called, I'll abbreviate these, the extensor digitorum. So I'm writing digitorum. And we've got a muscle that extends the index finger. So it's called extensor indices, or indices, indices. Okay, and then we've got one for the little finger, which is called, but think of the word, okay, I love the name for this one, so it'll be called an extensor digiti minimi. So extensor digiti minimi, minimi, okay, so you've got them, but also you've got extensor carpi, carpi radialis, Longus and brevis. All right. So, like brevis in particular is known to cause part of a carpal tunnel sort of syndrome. It's responsible for mainly because of its attachment, which affects the third metacarpal, is involved in that finger extension. Now, we've also got, if I look at my thumb here, then this area is called the anatomical snuff box, and then this tendon is called the extent, the medical word for the thumb is called pollux or pollex, so that will be called extensor pollicis, and because it's relatively long, it'll be the longest muscle, okay? So it'll be called extensor pollicis longus. And the one next to it will be shorter, so it'll be called extensor pollicis brevis. And when we have one next to that one, because that movement is if you think about moon as extension, this movement will be abduction. So this will be the abductor pollicis longus. Okay, well, so you can see we have many muscles that is innervated by the radial nerve. And the sensory, so the sensory, so we'll put the sensory, so here, all right. The sensory is mainly in those a few areas, I'll try to keep it simple. I would normally consider that the web space between the index finger and the pollux is the main area of radial nerve innervation, even though it's a dorsal hand, okay, part of the forearm as well, okay, as part of the, they call it the posterior interosseous nerve. But in, in reality, I normally, when I test the radial nerve, I look for altered sensation to this area in here. 
So if I put the web space between the pollux and index finger, even though there are other areas, but I'm sure you can find them. All right, so that'll be the radial nerve done. Now, the median nerve in red. Now, the median nerve. Let's do the motor supply first. Again, there's going to be lots of muscles in here. Now, the motor supply for this one, if you think about this, okay, the median nerve, when it comes down, comes down through a space called the, the carpal tunnel. And many people have like a condition called, say, tenosynovitis. And then the finger tendons are inflamed and then that nerve gets compromised. And most people will be aware of an altered sensation to the thumb, index, middle, and half a ring finger in this sort of area in here. And if I look at my hand to this pad, this is called the phenar eminence. So the median nerve will supply this muscle in here in particular, or muscles, I should say. But before it gets there, it naturally supplies the muscles of the forearm. So naturally, the radial nerve is more the extensor. The median nerve is more the flexors. So let's look at that first of all, okay? So we've got, in fact, higher up, we've got the two pronators. So we've got the pronator teres and quadratus even though the quadratus is naturally lower down, but higher up in here. So we've got them. And then we've got the flexor, if I abbreviate it, flexor digit torum superficialis. Okay, so that one naturally flexes the digits, all right, and it's a superficial muscle. There is a deeper one, yeah, deeper one to that called flexor Digitorum, if I abbreviate that as profundus, okay, but what it does, the median nerve only supplies the radial side because the ulnar side is obviously supplied by the ulnar nerve. So it's basically the radial, okay, side of the flexor digitorum profundus. Now, but it is a muscle, not everybody has one. Um, I don't have one in particular, and it's called the palmaris longus. Palmaris longus. And also we've got flexor carpi radialis. Okay, so that's mainly going to be in the, the forearm area. So when we come into the hand, there is a group of muscles that we call the loaf. Okay, and they stand for the L, the O, the A, and the F. And they form part of the, the phenar eminence in here. So if I put L, so the L will be the lateral to lumbricals, i.e. the second and the third, all right? So the lumbricals, then the O will be op on ends, pollicis, pollicis brevis, okay? So that's L, O, and then we've got the A, which is ab, ducta, pollicis, brevis, and we've also got uh, flexor pollicis brevis. Wow. So they are the main ones within the hand. And if I, like open ends, it allows you to place the thumb and touch the digits along here. And naturally, abductor pollicis and flexor pollicis. Okay, so those, and then the lumbricals are the deep muscles, almost like part of the intrinsics within the hand. So that's the motor supply. So the, the sensory supply, okay, so the sensory supply, a lot of people will know this one because it's the thumb, index, middle, and half a ring finger in here. So it supplies the lateral two-thirds of the dorsal part of the hand, but also the two digits of the second and the third, yeah, but only the tips in this sort of area. So the, so the sensory, so if I said the thumb, yeah, the pollux, yeah, so the index, ring, and half, uh, little uh, ring finger, index, uh, middle. Let's just rub that out. Oh, it looks like I'm making a mess up. I was doing so well. Okay, so thumb, index, middle, and half, half a ring. 
Okay, and that's mainly the sensory. Now, the last one, the ulnar nerve. And we're in purple. Now, the ulnar nerve, so we've already discussed the flexor digitorum profundus is by the radial side. So within the forearm, then this nerve will supply. So let's go over here. So we'll do the motor supply here. So it'll be the ulnar side of flexor digitorum profundus. It also does the flexor carpi ulnaris. And the ulnar nerve, it goes into the hand and it passes between the bone called the pisiform. And then there's a hook of hamate and it forms a tunnel of guion or the guion's canal. And then in terms of sensory, it supplies the little finger and half the ring finger. And then, okay, and then also this area part of the hand and on the top in here. But in terms of this motor supply, this is the phenar eminence. And then this is called the hypophenar eminence. So there are muscles located within you, and because they affect the little finger, they're going to be called digiti minimi. Okay, so we've got O, which is opponens digiti minimi. Okay, so it's almost like, like a loaf again, so the L-O-A-F. So we've got the A, which will be abductor, and if I do this, digiti minimi. So we've got F, which is flexor digiti minimi, but also it does a few other ones. It also does motion of the thumb. Yeah, so it controls the thumb, so it also controls the adductor pollicis on that. So it controls, and that's the longest on that. Um, it also does palmaris. brevis within that area, and also does the third and fourth lumbricle. Wow, almost there. And the sensory will be, so the sensory will be the ulnar side of the hand. Okay, naturally the little finger plus half the ring finger. I just need to check one thing on that one. Yeah, I'm not sure if it's adductor pollicis longus. It could actually be abductor pollicis brevis on that one, where it comes in. So I apologize um, if it's longus. I think it could be the brevis. I hope you enjoyed the talk on the branches of the brachial plexus. Please subscribe to my channel. And, uh, and I hope you enjoy what I do. Thank you.